Hi there. How would you like to learn about a tiny secret world? A hidden tiny secret world. One that's all around us, all the time, but it's tiny and hidden and you have to look for it. And the other thing about this is that there are millions and millions of creatures in this tiny world. My name is John Sanderson and I'm a scientist and I study this tiny world. And I'd like to tell you a little bit about it today. So to give you an idea of the kinds of creatures that I'm talking about in this world, let me tell you a little bit about what some of them do, okay? Maybe you can figure out what world I'm talking about. Some of them have ears on their knees or on their backs. Some of them taste with their feet. They almost all breathe through holes in their sides. To get bigger, they have to crawl out of their skin. Their bones are on the outside of their body, not on the inside. And most of these creatures have six legs, but some of them have no legs at all. And most have wings, but then they can use them to fly. Some of them can fly all the way from New York to Mexico, and that's about 2,800 miles. Amazing. So what kind of creatures am I talking about? Guess. Insects. Insects do all these things that I talked about. Let's talk about this amazing world of insects. Well, first of all, how many different kinds of insects are there? Well, this is a species scape. It shows how many different kinds of organisms there are in one group compared with the other groups. So if one group has more different kinds, the species or the picture that represents that group then will be larger than the picture of another group. So can you find the fish? Yeah, there's the fish. I've circled it in red. Now let's compare how many kinds of fish there are with how many kinds of birds there are. Can you find the bird? Great. Yep, the bird is circled in yellow. How big is the picture of the bird compared with the picture of the fish? Yep, the bird picture is a little smaller than the fish, isn't it? So that means that there are fewer kinds of birds than there are fish on the earth. Now, what about the mammals? Can you find a picture of a mammal? You have to look carefully. Good searching. You found the little elephant circled in blue, which represents all the kinds of mammals on earth. So it represents all the kinds of cats and dogs and tigers and squirrels and mice and horses and all the other mammals on earth. It's so small that it looks like there aren't very many kinds of mammals, right? Now, what is very clearly the largest organism pictured in this species scape? Of course, it's that big black beetle. It's way bigger than any other kind of organism in the picture. And that's because there are way more kinds of insects than there are any other kind of organism on Earth. How many kind of insects are there? Well, scientists have discovered about a million kinds of insects, but we think there are at least two to three million more still to be discovered. And probably at least a thousand different kinds of insects are in your backyard over the year. So where do insects live? This is obviously a picture of the earth. And let's think about where insects might live. In the forest? In the desert? In cold places where there's ice and snow? In cities? 
in your house, in the water, in the soil? Well, can you think of a place on earth where insects do not live? Many people think that insects might not be able to survive in the frigid Antarctica, the South Pole. But some insects actually do live there. The only place on earth where insects do not occur is in the ocean. A few insects actually do live on the surface of the ocean, but none actually live in the water of the salt water of the ocean. But what about how many individual insects there are on earth? In other words, how abundant are insects? Well, this is just a, a diagram showing the difference between vertebrate animals and just the ants. If you take, if you, if we went to the Amazon, the Brazilian Amazon rainforest, and we collected in a, in a square mile, all of the vertebrate animals we could find, all the fish, all the birds, all the reptiles, all the mammals, and we weighed them. And then we just found all of the ants, not the caterpillars, not the butterflies, not the beetles, just the ants alone. And we weighed them. Well, this shows that giant ant compared to that jaguar. And it turns out those insects, just the ants, would weigh four times as many as all of the vertebrates in the Amazon. That's how abundant insects are compared to uh, other, uh, many other animals. How big are insects? Well, this is probably the biggest that we know about right now. This is the South American Titan beetle. It's got a great scientific name, Titanus giganteus, and it's up to six and a half inches long. That's a pretty big beetle. Those, its, its mandibles, its teeth are able to snap a pencil in half. And how small are insects? Well, this is a fairy fly and they are so tiny that they actually grow up inside the eggs of other insects. Can you imagine how tiny an insect egg is? Well, these guys grow up inside of insect eggs. They're very tiny. Now, let's make sure we know what we're talking about here when I talk about insects. Is this an insect? No, it's a spider. And among other differences, spiders have eight legs and insects have only six. This is an insect. It's a wasp, and you've probably seen these. It has three pairs of legs, in other words, six legs. It has two wings, although two pairs of wings, although you can't see both pairs. Three body segments, a head, its thorax, and its abdomen. It's got a pair of compound eyes, a pair of antennae, among other insect characteristics. Let's look at some strange body shapes that insects have used, some ways that their bodies have been formed that are just outrageous. So here's a fulgurid bug. Here's a very oddly shaped grasshopper. Here's what's called a stock-eyed fly. And the reason it's a stock-eyed fly is because those red dots on the end of those stalks are its eyes. This is called a, uh, a giraffe beetle because it's got that giant long neck. And this is called a snake fly for obvious reasons. Now let's go through and look at some insect body colors. And please remember that no one painted these insects that I'm about to show you. This is the way they really look in nature. Here's a very interesting looking beetle. I love this one. This is a scarab beetle and it's lime green body with lavender legs. This actually looks like a gold nugget when it's walking along the ground. 
It looks like metallic gold and it has pink legs. It's just two very, very colorful beetles. Here's another beetle that's very colorful. And this one, if you turn it upside down, it's bright red. This is a red beetle, completely red. Here's a blue beetle, completely blue. And here's a yellow beetle with some spots. Very pretty colors. Now I'm going to show you a bunch of weevils, which are a kind of beetle. But these, remember, have not been painted. This is what they look like in nature. There's one. There's another. Blue polka dots. There's another. Pretty crazy looking. Somebody looks like they drew circles all over this guy. And now really colorful circles. Look at this one. And this one. And this one. And someone colored the circles in and this one it looks like. But that's the way it really looks in nature. That is just crazy. What amazing colors on that beetle. And another crazy one. Pretty amazing colors and color patterns. Now, can you guess what this is? It's a blue insect, but did you know that's a cockroach? It's not the kind of cockroaches that are pests uh, around our houses. This one lives in the tropics, out in nature, in the jungle, but it's beautiful blue and it's not a pest. Now, just really weird looking insects here. These are bugs. Insects can be really cute too. This is a immature grasshopper. And then this is a little columbulin called a springtail. And you probably have these all over your backyard in the soil, whether you know it or not. Really cute little pudgy guys. How do insects hide? Insects need to hide to escape predators like birds and snakes and uh, frogs and things that want to eat them. Well, what do they do? How do they hide? Well, one way they can do that is what we call camouflage. So here's a picture of a grasshopper <laughs> that sticks out against this orangish reddish sand because of its colors. But if it, and it goes to its natural habitat here, it almost disappears. And that's called camouflage. It's the same grasshopper, but now it's in a bunch of lichens. And then some insects masquerade. They look like something that they're really not. And this is a good example of that. This is a leaf. This is an insect that looks very much like a leaf. So a bird may not even notice this one because it thinks it's just a leaf. Now, a few insects are pests and eat our crops. And there's some Japanese beetles and a caterpillar that's eating a leaf. And these can be pests. And some are pests because they can transmit deadly diseases like this mosquito. But a lot of insects, and in fact, most insects, do great things for the earth. And in fact, if insects weren't around, the earth, nature would not work correctly. Insects are absolutely crucial. And we call these things that insects do ecological services. And one of the most important ecological services that insects provide is pollination. For us, about 75% of the food we eat has to be pollinated and insects are crucial for making that happen. In other ways, ecological service that insects provide is simply being food. A trout is pretty much 100% mayflies. That's what they eat. 
And there's a lizard here with a beetle in its mouth and a robin feeding her babies with a grasshopper. So insects provide food for other organisms and they're crucial. That's what the other organisms have to eat. Insects also do a great job of keeping other insects from getting out of control. And there are insects that are real good hunters, parasites and, and predators, uh, just like a lion going after a gazelle. Insects are tremendous predators in some cases, and they keep populations of, of uh, plant-eating insects from getting out of control and, and decimating uh, plants. So who created all these insects? These amazing insects. Who's creative enough, powerful enough to design all these places they live, different things they do, different ways they look? Who made this one to live in the soil? Others to live in the desert? Others to live in underwater all their lives? How does that happen? Who could do that? Who's powerful enough to do that? Take a guess. Well, in the Bible, in Genesis, it says, God made the wild animals according to their kinds, the livestock according to their kinds, and all the creatures that move along the ground according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good. And what do you think are included in all the creatures that move along the ground? Believe me, there's a lot of insects. And then in the Psalms, in Psalm 104, it says, How many are your works, O Lord? In wisdom you made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. And we just talked about how many different kinds of insects are on earth compared to the rest of the creatures on earth. So the next time you're digging in the dirt and you come across an insect or you're on a picnic and you see some kind of an insect on a tree or on the flower, remember who made it and that God is powerful enough and creative enough to plan its life, where it lives, what it does, just the amazing, awesome creativity of God. Thanks for being with me. Thanks for listening. Bye. See you around.